So guys, I'm slightly bit late compared to the other streamers on this balance patch. Uh, main reason is I was working on my new place pretty much whole day. So I'm working on my new streaming room, so that's why I'm still in the scuffed streaming room. However, I made a video talking about the balancing yesterday, which I will still release probably tomorrow or later today as well, depending on what time you're looking at it. Just to talk about the overall balance in the game right now and how I feel about it. Um, just because I think it's an overall interesting video and no matter balance patch that came out just now, don't think it really changes all too much. Okay, I can read it from here, but that is going to be really small. Let me actually take it on a... So this one I can zoom in, just have to keep in mind that my f face is covering shit. Okay, so the new balance patch. Most people would have already read it, but if you're watching this, you're mainly watching it for my opinion on it, I guess. So here's a walkthrough of the balance patch that we will carry out soon. We've been playing close attention to the user's opinion and we copy pasted the same story that we pasted in here next time. Okay, next, continue. Um, first one, Weapon Master. Remove the effect of your attack power increases as your HP decreases. I am not going to lie that I didn't even know it was there. Like legitimately, I completely forgot about it. And Dominic still one-shots things while being full HP. So I don't really think it's a bad... Like, I see four people saying same in chat right now. So I'm not the only person. I'm legitimately not the only person on this. So I would say, fair that they do it. I didn't even know it was there, but fair. But it's not that big of an issue. I think Dominic is still fine. Dominic still, if it procs on first turn while being full HP, it's going to destroy shit. He's fine. It's, I think it changes shit if he's left over with low HP or something. I really didn't even know that he was going for more damage. The Shizuka one, I actually kind of predicted, which is also kind of an obvious simple nerf to do. Um, so that obvious simple nerf is just one up on the cooldown skill three, which I think is fair in the case of Shizuka because mainly if she was proking and putting the S2 on herself to cooldown decrease, she was still getting a lot of cooldown stuff going. So she had her skill pretty much too fast. So I would say two out of two, fair changes, fair nerfs. That is that's is what it is. Then we have something that was how to nerf say.exe. No, I'm just kidding. Well, no, it's actually true. Pass, passing time recovers 15% to 10% of the attack bar when a critical hit lands. So technically we're looking at a 33% nerf, which is pretty big, I would say. However, would I say that I'm insanely salty about this? Not necessarily. I'm kind of slightly annoyed by it that it's this close to the prelims. But besides that, I'm not super salty about this. I'm not going to say like, oh... Oracles are shit right now, Gianna shit, Lima shit, blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. Um, but it does hit me quite well because I'm pretty much the most well-known Gianna Lima spammer out there, I guess. Um, other Oracles still get a buff of doing something else. However, they, Lima and Gianna don't. So I would have to see how big this is for a, a look and feel the moment I start playing with it. Because technically it is a 33% nerf, but instead of having to get all the way to 55 extra percent attack bar, you now have to do 70% extra attack bar, which is a good amount more in case that you crit everything. Unfortunately, I am one of those people that actually always puts max crit rates on their fucking unit, so it would hit me more. So I got hit more for being like more sophisticated in crit rate. Once again, that kind of sucks. However, I feel like the units are still doable. I might just have to rethink what kind of builds I'm playing them in, what kind of teams I'm playing them in, how I'm playing them, when I'm playing them. But I think there will be less spammable units. That's that's the main thing. I think it's very good. Uh, or I, I would still say the units are very good, but I think there might be better as counter picks right now rather than a first, second or third pick. Same as, for example, a 
Tian Lang is not a second or third pick. Tian Lang is a very good fourth or fifth pick. And I think Lima and Jaina might be more uh, going towards that pact as well. Would you still put max crit rate on Juno, Sierra, etc.? I would arguably say, especially Sierra, since she does damage by bomb, it gets less interesting. Also, the additional damage by attack and speed and that kind of stuff, sure, they still multi-hit on S1, but S1 is going to happen less. If you have more bomb damage on the Sierra and therefore you snipe something, it might arguably get more interesting. Or if you get more accuracy so you're actually landing your bomb, that kind of stuff, it might get more interesting. So, it is not necessarily the biggest nerf but they just touch or they kind of force you to check into like okay what are the other strengths of the other units so let's actually move on past just looking at the s1 we have loss of cost and effects the passive of juno which increases attack bar for two turns if you had a harmful effect so if she cleanses something she's gonna get attack bar for two turns which enables a few other units to give her more debuffs again because um, for example Gianna makes attack speed into a stun and that kind of stuff so that's beneficial for her in a kind of weird way but she's not gonna lose any of her speeds uh, someone in my uh, discord already did the calculations I kind of glanced over it but she only if she cleanses something then she's going to get a speed buff she's not always going to get a speed buff however when are you using juno when you get fucking debuffs aoe like legit when are you using a juno you're not gonna use a juno against the lucian team or something like come on you, you're, you're gonna use it when you're gonna get debuffs so this shit is going to happen very likely and i would actually feel that this is a pretty nice upgrade for juno because juno had issues sometimes getting turns if she was getting stunned or slowed and that kind of stuff and this actually helps her getting turns plus what's a really big factor right now before with juno you always felt like you couldn't really do s2 because every time you did s2 you felt like you had a very long time for getting your attack bar up compared to doing an s1 currently the difference is a lot less because you get that speed buff so i would say juno is definitely buffed even though this is nerfed now we have promised time decreases attack bar for the target with a detonated bomb by 30%. Attack bar manipulation is always strong. If you can ruin attack bar orders in any kind of form sort of way, it can be very beneficial. Simply by saying, okay, your stripper moves after your team or your, let's say you outspeed a more for whatever reason, you blow up the attack, uh, you blow up the bomb and it gets decreased. Well, actually more is a bad example because more Wait, I'm not, in, I'm not entirely sure how that interaction works with more. Because you do S3, S3 does damage, more gets attack bar pushed, but then it gets attack bar decreased. Right? I'm not sure how that will work. That is pretty interesting, actually. So, I think with that kind of stuff, it's the same with multi-hits, he gets more afterwards. Oh, that kind of sucks. Well, whatever. Other units that you can think of that you put the armor breaker after the uh, damage nuke, anything like that. You have a whole bunch of options with this promised time. However, you actually have to land bombs for that. And landing bombs is a bitch. So, mm, I would have rather seen it the other way around. She gets 30% attack bar for exploding a bomb. That would be nice on her. That would be way nicer than decreasing it. However, I think it's I think it's an okay-ish buff. I think this is this is like a let's say this is a minus one, then this is a plus two, this is a minus one, and this is a plus one, so you net zero. That that's what I would say. Then daydream increases attack speed for all allies for two turns. I'm not too sure. For some reason, um Praha is kind of falling out of meta because some other units just do a lot more. I'm not sure. Maybe you see one over here. May maybe you see one over here and maybe Oliver. But you don't see that one in here. But maybe those units kind of make it that Praha is like a... a <laughs> like she has a hard day at the job. Let, let's say it that way. So I'm not sure if this is going to say like, okay, now she has a decent day at the job. I don't know. I don't know. It's a decent buff. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think on paper it feels big, but it actually isn't. Did you get Veronica? Man, I wish. Veronica is by 300% the best stripper in the game right now. Like legitimately, I'm not going to lie. If I would make a tier list right now, Veronica would be the very first unit that I put at 105. I'm not fucking lying. I have made the tier list since season 13 and I didn't miss a single season and I never put a unit in 105. Currently, I would put Veronica on 105. I'm not lying. Do you still use Dominic after this patch? Yes, I do, of course. So, I'm actually surprised to not see Veronica on this list. I'm very much surprised. Maybe it's too early to nerf her, but I am very surprised Veronica is not on this list. So, in your opinion, Veronica is better than Gianna. Okay, let's say I mentioned that I put a unit on 105 tier and I never actually put any unit higher than 100. In most cases, I didn't even put units in 100. That should answer your question. Um, so let's continue. We actually, we talked about five things of the whole balance patch and we're like 11 minutes in. Anyhow, um, we have the Varad and Varad doesn't glance if the enemy defense is less than half of your defense. Which I would say for Varad is relatively doable. It makes Varad more interesting on speed, defense, defense, I would say. Um, you cannot really put crit rate to it too much. You also have to have enough accuracy. So it's not that easy to have that much defense on it. But it is pretty interesting. And also because the S2 can prolong the freezes of the S3. I would say Verrat has some decent to good implications where you would say, okay, Verrat is pretty doable, usable, that kind of stuff. Do you think Triple Revenge Lima's dead after this? I cannot say about that yet. It will be a lot worse because Triple Revenge is really based on the S1. That will be a lot worse right now because getting 30% attack bar on a counter versus 45 is a big difference. So I'm not sure. Um, then we have the, well, yeah, it's a very good unit again for, uh, what's it called? For TOA and that kind of stuff. Yes, that's true. I'm just R2 RTA focused, but no, TOA, that kind of stuff for Red is getting better. It's actually getting on point with Tyrone again. Then we have the Cyrus, very brave. If you have more, uh, or one extra turn than the max cooldown, if you have more attack than blah, 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 that kind of stuff. It is fun for arena offense, I guess, but in most cases, if you actually land your cooldowns, it doesn't really... Yeah, if you if you already landed in the first place, it's not gonna get any better. Like, come on, this... this it's... stop kicking it, it's dead already. The, the main issue is not landing this skill. Not the issue of the cooldown of six turns, it should be seven turns, that's... That doesn't really change anything, in my opinion. Cool and all, but whatever. Then we have Grogan. And Grogan got a buff, and I have a Grogan. I use a lot of Grogan. And I actually have no fucking clue why he needed this. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty much... Maybe one of the few streamers slash YouTubers out there that has Grogan uses Grogan. But I have no clue why he needed... Doing always critical hit on lights, so you really fuck up the mollies and that kind of shit. I would still go 100 crit red because you want to crit everything, but you are, because we're gonna get to it at some point, you're gonna crit kinkies, which is bonkers. That's absolutely bonkers. But I'm not sure if this is for overall or only light. That's the only thing. The wording is not clear to say that it's going to. Always crit on light units, and is the damage increased for light units only, or is it for all? I assumed all, to be honest. But I'm not 100% sure. If it is for all, then it's going to be by far the best uh, AoE unit, AoE damage unit out there. Um, the main issue is still killing Abelios fully. If it's all, this is going to kill Abelios for sure. But I'm actually, I'm going to, when I finish like talking about all of this, I'm actually going to go into a test, test this after the balance patch, I will test the damage again, of course. 
So then we have the Light Unimusius Soul, which says that if a, a, a critical hit occurs by a skill that always crits, exactly this one, you will still always crit. So Tiana is going to fuck you up, Kinky. A Grogan is going to highly fuck you up. Very much fuck you up. That's next level. But that also means that Onimushas are no longer as good in art in net five defenses because you can just Tiana Poseidon them, whereas before it was tricky to a certain degree. Also, Onimushas in AD are going to get worse, which I'm actually pretty happy about because Kinkies were just very broken in AD in the first place. So I'm I'm not sad about this. I also don't have a Kinky, so fuck Kinky. Ah. Okay, so then we have the uh, Camilla. Camilla reduces the damage of non-critical attacks by 20%. Whoopty fucking do. That's pretty much the only thing I can say about it. It was a dumbest stall unit, I'm gonna waste your time, but you're still going to win against me. And now it's going to be a dumbest stall unit that's going to waste your time, but you're still going to win against this. Whoopty fucking do. I don't know, man. Um, then we have the Valkyria, which is Vanessa, and Vanessa is going to decrease the cool time to four turns. That is a lot. But the main thing I want to actually see, if we go to a Vanessa, is eight turns before cooldowns from skill-ups, and I do think so. So does that mean that she has her shit up after like three turns, or even two turns? Where the frick's she at here? It's eight. It goes down to four. So that means two. Are you fucking kidding me? She literally procs once and she becomes Nana? Are you fucking kidding me? We have a Nana with 33 lead? What? Yo. Okay, she is up by two turns every time she... Wait. It's increased by two turns whenever you revive an ally with this skill. But is that on active? Or is that on passive? Because... It's two, then six, then four. Okay, so I guess two, four, six, but still two on the first time is, your match is probably done by that time. Nana couldn't be reset. Fair enough, fair enough, a hey, Oliver can still reset you, but you reset it, it's just two turns. Okay, I feel like this is very strong, people are going to use this again. Nana doesn't give attack buff, true. Nana still revives your whole fucking team though, if you have enough stacks, but... I would definitely say that this is good, this is... People are going to use this. Nessa MST a good, good again? Nah. Is it 4, 6, 8? I'm not entirely sure because the moment you use it and your cooldown is 2, does it instantly become 4? So it's always 4. I'm not sure. Because your cooldown in the first place is 2. If you reset it, it's still 2. But then if you use it once, does it be 4? So it's never actually on 2. Could it be just 4, 6? I don't know. After first refive, it becomes four. Exactly. So it's right away four six. It's never two. It's only two if you reset it. Then it's two. So it's always the moment it happens, it j jumps to four.
Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So it's still not the same as before balance patch because it used to be six. Four is less than six in my math. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let's continue on. We have sort of gist charge that can hit two to three times. This gives me a fucking stroke, man. Stop doing this inconsistent bullshit. Like, f fuck, like, legit. I don't know who's creating this kind of stuff, but he's either on too much crack or too little crack because the current state is not working. I don't know, man. What? The, why would you do two to three random hits? Yeah, so it's four hits in total right now. Yeah, why? Just make it always three or always four, but not this inconsistent rockery bullshit. It's just, come on, man. I don't know. Ragnarok doing 15% extra damage. I feel like people are sleeping on Trinity, not gonna lie. Use Trinity as a arena offense unit and she is legitimately good. She is legitimately the highest 33 damage or 33 speed lead, damage dealer, nuker, even on being the wrong freaking type that there is. People are sleeping on this unit. Okay, then we have the Dark Bison. The duration of harmful effects you grant with skills will be increased by one turn. Hmm. Hmm. Wouldn't attack type do more than 15% damage? It would, of course. But still, Ragnarok is doing a good amount of damage. Legit. But still, this is pretty nice. It's not exactly what he needed though. Because the main issue with the Dark Bison is that he doesn't land consistent armor breaks on his S1. That's his issue. While with this two turns harmful effect, so two turns provokes, is going to make things a bit longer. Also his S2 provides armor break, right? So it's going to armor break two turns right now, which is a lot better. So, hmm, hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a blow to you, Joe. So I think the Dark Bison is going to be doable with this. Plus, you can actually put this on Revenge. Revenge is going to provoke for two turns. Because it says, with your skills. It doesn't say on your turn. And the thing which is nasty on your turn, on your turn doesn't work on Revenge. This still works on Revenge, if I read it correctly. So I would say that this is actually pretty legit. Then we have the Panda Warrior. Decreases incoming damage by 35 to 50% if the enemy attack has lower attack power than yours. Uh, that's a lot of damage decrease, but there's a lot of units that have more attack than you. So I am not entirely sure if this would be such a great thing, but I think it would be an okay thing. Not really expecting to see too much uh, too much Panda Warriors coming up. I th it's very good for Siege. I think it's really legit one of the best bruises for Siege. That, that's pretty much what's happening right here. One of the best bruises for Siege and that's, that's about it. Totemist, the Alaya, and we have Remove a Harmful Effect on Allies. Again, very strong siege unit. Insanely strong siege unit. Then we have the Dark Totemist, Half Moon Tributes, Totem, I don't even know which fucking skill this is. And we have Yumi with a tier 1 for 32 months. Appreciate it. It's pretty long already. Orange Heart Zany face Orange Heart. Um, so yeah, we have that Totemist. I'm not sure about the Totemist, like still. I, I, I don't know. I do not know. Then we have Shadowcasters, both Wind and Light, so is this going to make Glorious happy or not? Decrease cool turn by one turn, I think that is fair because it was pretty lengthy. But this? Can someone actually tell me what's the fucking difference? Because there's too much fucking text and I couldn't figure out when I was reading it quickly, what the fuck is the difference? Still can't figure it out. 
it attacks now, it hits. So that's the only thing, it damages. Depending on uh, multipliers. And only thing I can say, depending on multipliers. Could be good, could be shit. Maybe sometime good, maybe sometime shit. The big question is that if Shadow Tide hits, does it ignore defense on the light caster right away? That's my only question. Because that will be relatively nutty. And the shadow stays after you hit them again. Okay. The main question is, do you apply shadow tie and right away get this passive of the light shadow caster? Because that will make him very good. Very, very good. Um, depending also how much this thing hits. So then we have the wind one with uh, weird ass chaos bullshit. Removes one beneficial effect from all allies while it's Why would you exclude bosses for that? Like, oh, no, the boss is like, ooh, ooh, you remove my what buff? Whatever. Okay. It grants one random effect for two turns along. Defense decrease, attack decrease, speed decrease, chance of letting glancing. On the enemy that has one beneficial effect remove afterwards guarantee the attack or status with other random units. Uh yeah. I th I think what Crazy is saying is very accurate. It's it's a weird Orion thingy. I'm still not gonna like it. It really depends how much damage this shadow tie starts to do, I guess. But I'm really not going to be too much of yay. Light one, however. Because it also removes one benefic beneficial effect when you hit it. And you ignore defense. And you decrease the damage taken from that unit. Plus if this thing ignores defense straight away. And has one cooldown less. Then suddenly Shun becomes a very good unit. A very very good unit. So. Curious to see if this works right away into this passive and the multiplier on Shadow Tide. That's, that's pretty big factors. Then we have Chun Li's, a bunch of Chun Li's. We have the Wind and the Dark one, the S2, decreases more attack on multi hits. I would say that the Dark one was already very good in uh, 4 star RTA. I'm not entirely sure if this becomes anything too useful. Uh, Water one decreases more attack bar, so therefore she also starts ignoring defense faster. Might be something funny for dragons to check out again, but I don't really feel like this is going to do all too much in, in most cases. I don't know. And the wind one is increased attack power value that increases proportion to your speed. If the multiplier is very high on this, it might actually be interesting, but I don't even fucking know what kind of S2 she has. What, 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 what's your S2? Mrs. Chen Li, what is your freaking S2 on that shite? Okay. And this one. And this one is going to do more damage. Depending on multipliers, might be interesting. I'm not sure. It's kind of depending on the multipliers of how much this uh, way too long name actually starts to work at. So we have all of those and then the copy of that. The multipliers are shit. Yeah, I guess so. But if the multiplier on this is a lot, the increase attack power value that increases the proportion of the speed. Might be interesting. Now we have the Horus and Horus changed the skill to Grant of Oblivion and prevents the target from removing for harmful effects for two turns with a 70% chance. Please tell me, please tell me that you get two times 30% in your freaking awakening and it's not a dumb inconsistent skill. Probably is not going to be like that, right? Oh wait, it's the third skill. Okay, good. thank god. Thank fucking god it's actually ending at 100%. Holy shit. Um, but that's actually nice, because we don't have the, the, what is it, the cleansing block on too many units. Especially net force. What is this S2 again? 
Increase defense for all allies for two turns and decreases. So you could say you're going to use Horus, Tractor and Lulu together. And I think that will be something like a decent offense. Yeah, I feel like that would be a decent offense, I guess. I'm not really thinking about seeing him all too much in RTA. It could happen, but it's not really something I expect too much, to be honest. But it could happen. It could happen. Now we have the Gargoyles. If they end their turn with less than 70% HP, they will turn into a statue. Okay. Now we have the Dark One. Destructive Claws. Recover your HP from 10 to 15. Okay. Then we have the uh, Water, Wind, Light 1, Air Strike, recover your HP from 10 to 15 when... Okay. I don't even know. I know some people use Gargoyles in Siege Offense, but I also uh, know I don't care. That's, uh, that's something uh, I know. Then we have the Dice Mages. So the Fire One rolls at the start of the battle which makes a lot more sense because his roll again actually decreased damage in some cases and increased damage in some cases it does make sense to have him have a chance to do the decreased damage roll right away that that just makes sense uh then we have two dices to recover your hp and recover dead allies for the same number so that means you're always going to revive your HP on this one? Yeah, so the higher you roll, the more HP you get. Fuck, that's going to be RNG bullshit nonsense. But I think th this thing is going to be Siege. This go is going to be Siege meta defense in Torny. Pretty fucking sure. It's annoying, it's a piece of Zog. This is going to be the thing people are going to be using in the defense on Tourney. Pretty fucking sure. Then we have Dice Trick and randomly grants harmful effects, increases landing. The, 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 mm, 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 mm. Not really sure if that's such a big thing people care about. Don't think so. Then we have the Light Dragon, Sarath is going to be even easier to build. I think Sarath already did enough damage, but fair enough, Grogan also got a buff. This is going to make it so much easier for people that have Sarath to one-shot the waves in Giants and SF10 and that kind of stuff. So, people that have Sarath, you can farm even faster right now. Woohoo! Uh, Panda, they changed the crit rate, which does make a lot of sense, to Aki, which does also make a lot of sense. Did Feng Yang really need a buff? I felt like Feng Yang was hella fine, so the, the, whatever. Okay, then we have the base speed of Unawakening will be the same. Okay. So, I guess, awaken that to that, awaken that to that. Okay, I guess that worked for all of them then. Wait, what kind of speeds do all of the others have? You are Drogon. Nope. You are Drogon. So, I guess it's all just plus five. That makes Drogon at a hundred. I don't mind. I do not mind. Can't complain about that one. Cannot complain about that one. Very solid. Always a good buff to have extra speed, right? We have Coco. Coco going for attack power lead 44. That's solid. That's very nice. Isn't all awakening to... Wait, is All Awakening going to be the same for all dragons? So it's a plus 2 buff on you, plus 3 buff on you, plus 5 buff on you, and plus 4 buff on you? Is that the thing? Ah, that's the thing. Okay. Okay. Nice. I guess. Ah, plus 3 buff. Ah, better than nothing. Better than nothing, I guess. 
Yeah, just three speed extra. But yeah, Coco going for attack power makes a lot of sense. She doesn't need crit rate with her S3, so that's that does make a lot of sense. Will she be usable offense-wise for sure? Defense-wise, I'm still not really sure. Coco is a fun unit though. I've been I used Coco in the last few sieges. It's actually pretty good. Now we have the wind one, the Momo. Momo is going for HP lead instead of attack power lead, which also makes sen more sense for her because she's more of a bruiser than anything. Now we have a few things that, for some reason, you didn't vamp. You didn't vamp. You didn't do shit. You did weird shit. And whatever on those. Okay. So that's all for the balance patch. The video was actually a lot longer than I expected. Um... In the end, I would say the dragons are the big winners, pretty much. I would say the bison is pretty nice. The oracles, I would say Juno's getting quite a lot better, or I would say reasonable amount better. Sierra's about the same. Praha, I'm not sure about because she doesn't really fit current meta. I feel like Vanessa will be something that's going to be more used for sure. I think the shadow casters might have a pretty nice buff, especially the light one really depends on multipliers and if this thing lands right away. I would say the Horus is nice for siege offense. I would say that this thing is going to be siege defense. And then Sierra or uh, Gianna and Lima are not necessarily gutted, but they're quite a bunch worse. But I would have to feel and play around with it, saying like, okay, how good does that stuff feel like for working? Dominic nerf Well as mentioned when I started reading this I didn't even know it. I literally forgot it was doing that shit as well, but Therefore, I don't think it's a big issue because on full HP you can still two hit something if he procs up well, I don't know. Um, And then Shizuka I think is a fair nerf because she's getting a lot of cool time reduction on the S2 anyway, so That's it for the balance patch. Can you get some benchmarks for a Vanessa RTA? I would simply say Speed, crit rate slash crit damage HP. It's still a tanky unit, it's still a support unit, and the only support she can give is revives and armor breaks. Hey, that sounds like some other unit we have. It's called a Nana, revives and armor breaks. Only difference is different element at 33 lead. So kind of that's kind of what we're looking at. Mid-tier bruiser units that you want to one-shot with. Let's say, I don't know, name a unit. I think it will be used a bunch more, but still, she's still countered by uh, Oliver because of resets. For arena defense, probably still double shield will. You you care about surviving the first hit, it's not caring about surviving the last hit. True, Nana does self-revive and can be re um, reset. So yeah, that's pretty much that for the balance patch. You have a bunch of new units in all kinds of quadrants. I actually expected them to go more for a balance patch towards Siege. It's actually just very lightly picked on Siege. There's just a few small Siege changes rather than really big Siege changes. And the Oracle change came kind of out of the blue for me. I didn't really expect it to have this kind of... Um, Kind of nerf at this time, especially because we're this close to the prelims, and they announced RTA skins for oracles. Well, actually, a worse timing would be give everyone RTA skin for oracles and do it afterwards. So, would they, if they are planning to do it, they would have to do it at some time, and then that some time is apparently now. Mm, it's what it is. It's what it is, and I'm also not sure about the Krogan. If he will always crit on light units, but is he also going to do 150% damage always? I do think so. But some people are thinking he only does 150% damage on light. Which could be true. What I do know is that Kinky is going to get fucked up by my Grogan. Really badly. Like, oh, you have no clue how bad. That's going to be so... I don't even need my Kaki anymore for Kinky Killer. That's, that's just juice. I like the look of that. So either how. It would be the same on light attributes, the, the same way Shazam says on dark attributes. Yeah, but it already does this anyways. So therefore I'm not sure. Show Grogi. Oh yeah, that's one thing I wanted to do. We're going to go with the Grogi. And we're gonna do some damage. 
And then after balance patch, I will show you same set, same damage, same whatever. Same, same, but different, but still the same. Um, so we are going towards the Grogan, and this video is way too long already, but ha, huh, I don't care. Okay, so that is your set. Your artifacts are still damage on water and damage on light. Reason for damage on water is because I want to kill Abelios. That's the biggest thing that's annoying to me if it stays alive when I use my Grogan team is Abelios. So in this case, we are actually going to hit, I think, a water unit, this one. And for the sake of it, we're going to hit this one. And then I will retest it on those same units again. And I will use this exact team. And this one is slower than that, right? Yes. So let's do it like this. No attack lead. Let's see how much damage we do. Okay, we got armor breaks on all of them fuckers. So we are doing a 43, this is a 54 if I'm not mistaken, and a 39. So yeah, this makes it better to view. 43 and a half, uh, 54 and a half, and 39 and a little bit less than half. So we are going to redo the exact same testing the moment the balance patch hits, and we will see if we're actually going to do more damage only on this one or on all three of them. So that is to come. And then this team doesn't even kill. This thing is too fucking tanky. Fuck off, go die. Anyhow. Anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. So yeah, that is my opinion on the balance changes. And this video is definitely too long. Anyhow, guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.